for my first ever painting video. Um, it may not see the light of day because the painting might go wrong, you never know. Anyway, but um, this is going to be a studio painting. Um, I will go out and do plein air paintings and you'll have um, the sight of me wandering the countryside looking for a beautiful scene and there'll be tinkly guitar music in the background very likely. Um, and uh, all nice scenic stuff for, for, that makes an interesting video. Right, this is the first time I've done a painting video, so it, uh, it uh, might all go horribly wrong. So what I'm going to do is paint a picture in the studio, and uh, I'm choosing a subject that is uh, quite hard to get a, a, a painting out of, because it's just a sort of moment of light as I was going to life drawing and I uh, stopped and the rain had just cleared and and I just liked the feel of the of the scene in front of me. I thought it was rather, rather beautiful. Um, but not an easy image to paint. As, as you see, there's not really a lot there. It's mostly mood. So what you're trying to do is to paint the light or paint or rather paint the air in between you and the subject so that um, it's the way that the haze has uh, taken the colour out. It's the air, actual air between you and the object you're painting. So uh, I do it, going to do it in quite a, a simple way. There's, um, as you see, I have broken the picture down uh, into uh, simple areas and tones. Um, I've just used Photoshop for this, but, um, and, and I don't usually, uh, I don't necessarily usually work like this, but it's a good way to learn how uh, an image breaks down into tones and try and see it. When you're painting outside, you, you, get, you can get the same effect by squinting. Um, but, um, and, and, but it does take practice and, and it's far, far from easy. As you may see, yeah, see, hope you can see on the video, um, I split it into tones and uh, colour areas. And I've also gridded it up. Uh, a lot of people don't do this, but if it's good enough for Dura, it's good enough for me. Um, indeed, um, artists used to use uh, painting frames, uh, which was just a, like a picture, empty picture frame without a picture in it. And um, then um, you put threads across at whatever intervals you want. Um, very uncool, but it actually, it, it's a good way to learn to draw accurately. Um, it's really not done very much now. I grid up for this sort of thing anyway, but... Um, And, uh, and eventually, if you, because uh, I was an illustrator, so I had to transfer um, drawings and um, uh, reference images from photographs um, accurately. This is before the advent of computers, where it's now very easy. Um, so I, I, I just needed a, a, a way to transfer um, the image accurately from my reference. Now, as, as you see, there's barely any of the dark. It's only um, just in that tight area there. So we can go on and mix some... Um... Ooh. Titanium white is the most fearsome uh, color. It, uh... Right, so we next. I'm going to the next dark, the next darkest, and I can, if I put it next to my dark there, I can get a pretty good idea if I'm on the money. Um, and this, technically, I suppose, if we're being very uh, proper, is uh, called the blocking. So you're trying to get it in, in as simpler areas as you possibly can.
There's a bit of green in this, actually, but uh, I can start to drift that in. And this will help me later. I won't be putting the very small features in yet. Or indeed trying to be too accurate because uh, it, it, it's a atmospheric scene in a country lane. Uh, accuracy is not a requirement really. But uh, mood and uh, atmosphere very much are. This is the real point of... Um, this is all going on quite thin as a general rule. Darks go in thinly and lights go in. More impasto. I think that sounds like a magician's phrase. Right. And we've got some more of that over there. My palette here is uh, very, very simple. Generally, I try and... Uh... Now, this is a really important line. I try and keep the palette as um, small as possible. You don't want millions of colours out there. We all have millions of colours. I have drawers full of the damn things. But uh, the ones you actually use are... Uh, are oh, very few. I don't know why I have all these colours really. Okay, I'm not bothering with the little details. We got, have got a really important line here. It's very, very important to get right. Um, so that goes across there. There's a little patch of light in there, which I think is rather nice. Uh, so this is the line of the edge of the road. Uh, and this is where your grid really helps you, because you can, you can you can sketch that in really accurately. First time, no problem. All right, a little bit more to go with this. I've got this area here, and we've got bits of green appearing in it again. In it again. Uh, that's quite an important one, let's have that feature in there. These will help me because as, as you may have noticed, I'm uh, Painting out my grid as I go. But uh, once I've got the main uh, landmarks in, it really won't matter. Okay, we've got... That just goes over. It's very easy to get lost and uh, start working for the wrong square. Quite annoying, it can be. There we go. The last little touches of this, and then this is the other edge of the road. We're nearly that. This is also a very, very quick way of painting, because um, I paint mostly plain air. Um, so this is very good training for what you have to do in your head. Uh, when you do plain air. So obviously I can't have a computer and uh, fancy uh, gizmos out in the um, we might have another brush I have a very uh, bad example, I paint with horrible beaten up brushes. Right, so <clears throat> next turn up, and I know uh, roughly because I've because I've got the uh, the first turns in. It, it's really easy to um, estimate. Uh, whether you've mixed the right tone or not. I 
this needs to be a bit darker, you can see straight away, but uh, that's okay. With this method, you 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 get the tones pretty 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 correct um, quite early on, so um, it's it's useful for that uh, purpose because you've got plenty of uh, information there to tell you uh, if you've uh, got them wrong. I'm not bothering to fill in terribly carefully. I tend to reserve uh, accuracy for... Um... Did I go through my palette? Probably not. <coughs> okay, well, go through the palette. Um, I have Titanium White. Oh, that's going to be a bit lighter. Which, as I mentioned, is a terrifyingly... Uh, Powerful colour. It could sort of uh, take over almost if you uh, in mixing. You only have to get the tiniest touch of it on a brush, and uh, it'll walk all over whatever colour you're mixing. It'll be very uh, subdued in colour here, of course. Okay, I feel this tone here, at this point, just looking at it quickly, this tone is a little bit overall too um, light. So I'm going to dark it down a little bit. It's the great way of working this way is that it's very easy to see um, if your tone is a little bit um, off and you can very quickly remedy it. Okay, that wasn't very far away. I might, now I've got that on the brush, I might get rid of a few of these. Undercoat bits. Put a few wonderful expressionistic -y. Okay. I'm going to get in there quick now. This isn't intended to be spade painting, but it just is because the camera will overheat. And cut off. And again, I can see those are a little bit too um, a little bit straight line there. I don't know what that is. Okay, we're nearly there. <coughs> I am still um, not satisfied with the uh, tone of this. Because I need to get separation uh, Much better. Uh, oops, greeny stuff in there. And it's worth um, working at this to um, to make sure you've got everything pretty much in place because uh, it's much harder to do it um, later on. 
And that's the blocking nearly done. The next stage, um, the sky area I treat slightly differently in that um, I usually mix on the board um, because I want um, the sky to have that uh, full on brightness and as we don't have luminous paint um, it's important to make sure that um, you've actually got that um, strength of contrast into the sky. So I tend to put the paint, or often in this case I'm just using white, um, straight onto the board and then I mix the tones on the board rather than uh, on the palette. Um, it's uh, not something many people do maybe but uh, I've, I've found it's the um, easiest way of getting uh, the very subtle um, bright tones because um, get that roughly in there just get a bit of paint on the ground and then I'll I'll stir stuff into that so we've got a slight uh, hint of greedy in this and as you see when I do this uh, the paleness of the white goes away with the tiniest of uh, quantities of colour added to it homeopathic might be the word That's still probably too light, but it won't take very much to um, bring it up to the correct tone. And then we have the last little bit around the edge here. And that's our blocking completed. And now we can put this uh, highlight back in as a highlight there. Goodness knows what it is, that highlight. So um, I, I now like to um, get rid of the, most of the undercoat, then I can see where I'm going. Right, there we go, that is stage one. And I will pause the video because I will go away and allow that to um, harden off a bit. If you leave if you leave oil paint, you only have to, you know, it only has to be um, half an hour. But it's one of the luxuries of painting in the studio. Um, so if I leave that for half an hour, um, it will uh, be absolutely fine upon my return to paint on top of and won't pick up onto the other, other layers too much. So we'll pause there. So I'm now going to work from the, uh, from the original photo. So uh, we don't need a grid anymore. And we actually, you actually see what some of these things are now. Um, right, and you see, see some things I I hadn't uh, didn't see before. So uh, so now we ha we can see that the uh, the edge of the road actually runs out here and goes sort of like that, which is rather nice. I agree with that. And we can start to get in. I'll start to get in a bit of the flow of the road there. We've got a few shapes in the road. Um, it's a lot of road, so I think I'll. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll get um, some of the road in. 
Um, it's rather a nice, um, a little bit of green in it. I rather like the tone of it. And then we've got a pretty strong edge here. Across that. It's still there. The nice thing about uh, having this underneath now is that um, well, I can start to get the flow of the road in. Some of that at uh, 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 a later stage, um, we'll get some full highlights in there. But for now, I should be satisfied with just getting a bit of a feel of the directions we've got going on there. Be careful not to drift too much colour into it. We will need some more blue. We're out of blue. And I need to keep on making sure that I keep um, those uh, initial um, tones that I've uh, carefully got in there in the first place. I don't want to lose any of those really. Okay, so the flow is established there. Again, you don't have to be too fussy of it. Uh, it's a road for goodness sakes. Um, No one will know if it's exactly right or not. Okay, so that's uh, indicated. Now I've got um, to soften these edges to get this sort of uh, the very key feature you can see in the in the distance there is um, I need to uh, get in is that there's a roof and um, but I'm going to get these uh, hazy blues in Well, I'm just trying to establish um, okay and uh, now I need so that's a distance that's, that's a hill in the distance there you see I can see that. I couldn't see that before but now I can all is uh, wonderfully revealed so we can have that quite strong line in I'm drifting a little bit more colour into it now, probably stronger colour than the reality, but uh, and this um this palish blue here uh is defining the shape of that tree, so it's really important. Because that's making the shape of that tree there, you see. And I can I can actually push those contrasts a bit and make it a little bit uh, punchier than it really is, which I think would be nice. And the same thing continues over here essentially. Um, so we've got um, telegraph pole there.
That's my tree being defined. That's my telegraph post. And you see how the um, having the um, and what have we got there? We've got a chimbley. It takes very little information to hint to the eye. Uh, a house or a even less a person. You only need the tiniest of um, hints. For the for for the uh, viewer's eye to uh, essentially hallucinate, um, a building because we're so good at spotting. So, it, 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 the amount of information you need to pick up familiar objects. This is really. Well, I'll come back and refine those shapes in a minute. Um, so that's that's looking good. Um, I've got a car in there. People who know my painting will know I'm rather fond of cars. Many count it as a fault, but I can't help it. I like cars. And there's so little to that car. It's just a... And there's a the shadow under the wheels. And there we have it. That's all, that's all we need for the car. And there's that rather nice um, touch of light here, which is essentially, this is essentially the focus of the painting. So the highlight on the car, the car, uh, I was only slightly joking about the car, but cars, but um, really the um, focus of the picture is little, this little corner as we go out. So I should be painting that pretty carefully. Um, and we've also, we've got some uh, bits of structure we can start getting in here. There's the... There's what looks like a... I don't know what that is. A bit of farmy sort of stuff, I think. And it, but it's got a nice highlight. And another nice highlight there, which we can exploit. And this has a highlight as well. I call this um, sort of bits and bobs jewellery because it's uh, they are like like sort of um, flashes of diamonds or whatever on the. I would like to get this here a post in. I'm always a bit puzzled by um, telegraph posts. <coughs> They don't look particularly nice in reality, but they look rather good in pictures, I think. They tell a... They tell a... a um, uh, when you're going into the white that I need to remove a little bit of white. Otherwise the white will win. And that goes down that. You can't make it out all the way. Um, but you don't need, again, as I say, the eye doesn't need much of a hint to put a post in. I can refine that in a bit. And then we actually have some other dark features cutting through this. A bit of stuff there. And there are a few things. There's these roads in, uh, and driveways in through the, uh, which are rather nice. Not sure I need all the ones that we have there. And this is actually a nearby tree here. 
So, uh, and it is uh, again the light, so it's uh, almost hazed out. And that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get that sort of, now you see it, now you don't. Can you quite make it out? Um, feeling. When you're uh, putting, when you're going out from uh, dark into light, you want to um, push out from the dark, ideally. Otherwise, you pull the um, Otherwise, you, 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 you tend to pull uh, the pails out into the out into the the darks out into the pails, and then they then they become very hard to get rid of, which is a bit of a pain. Um, okay, we've got quite a nice bit of light coming in here, and uh, green for the edge. And I, I'll probably push these a little bit away from the reality. Which is quite nice. And then we'll strengthen the hue a little as we come down into the foreground here. We've got a sort of uh, random bit of bank there which I think I'll leave out actually because I, I prefer I think uh, it's an extra sort of stuff and I try and limit the uh, different kinds of stuff in a picture and we don't uh, we don't need to know all that much about that and then we can get that line in a bit crisper I'm not sure what that light which was originally now it was definitely on the uh... anyway that's looking quite nice i think even though we can't see it uh in order to um take the road around the corner i'm going to add a little bit of that down there um and that that continues the road down down there which is which is uh, it's not like that in reality but um It makes better pictorial sense. Now the sun's come out, and, and it will probably change the uh, change the image and the uh, video. Oh, such joy! Um, I can now start to push the colour a little bit. So I'm going to pump some stronger blues into here. want to get a little bit of um, reinstate a little bit of darks um, in here otherwise it can tend to this sort of picture can tend to become just a sort of grey smirch and I can exaggerate a little bit so um, this roof is um, You, you can't really make out any colour, but I get to put a bit of colour in there. And in actual fact, you can see the pale gable as well there. Um, again, uh, you can't see this, but it's rather descriptive. just to make a little bit more of the house than we can really see. Not very much, but just enough to, just enough to tell us that uh, there's a house there. 
and we've got uh, we've got the top of a hedge coming along here as well. Uh, again, in reality, in the actual scene, it is barely visible, but. Uh, I think for our purposes we need some descriptive bits in there. That's top of the hedge again. And now you reach the really nice point of a painting where you've got some idea of where you're going. And, uh, Lost the tone of this, and so it can come back a bit. Now let's see the original. There's uh, that is actually another roof there. Okay. And I think I want to um, stress this. Um... Right, I was rudely interrupted as the battery ran out. My painting's hard enough without, um... <coughs> without thinking about video cameras and stuff at the same time. Um, what I was saying before I was rudely cut off was that I want to. Um, Slightly uh, push the um, tone of the trees on this distant hill. I think I do at the moment. I might roll back from that. If it's uh, too much. Let's we'll see. Do the same over here. Leaning back, and it's always important to keep on sitting back, leaning away. If you're out painting in the landscape, <coughs> you want to uh, be. Um, that's got a bit too warm, so I'll put a little bit of blue into that. And even though. Yeah, and I'll do there as well. And I think, um, this cave end could come from this just a tad. Right, <clears throat> so <clears throat> the next big area to get done, really, is um. We've got a few um, bits and pieces uh, where I need to sort of recover edges, or even 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 make up edges where I haven't got them. Um, so I th I feel that should be a a, a nearer a, a nearer bit of greenery, and it will also um, it it will also bring. Um, Uh, it also uh, it helps um, bring uh, the subject bring bring the subject forward, so we've got a bit more atmospheric uh, progression in in the tones. Because um, this picture is very much about um, let's get up into the sky and put the fiddly bits in later. It's very much about that haze uh, taking away, and, and to that end, I will uh, probably. I think I'm going to um, soften this turn on the hedge as well. Maybe not. Well, I'll soften it for now. <coughs> I 
I might have a bit more of the car. Okay, so we've got now some, uh, got to establish some stronger greens in this uh, foreground hedge. I don't want to lose the darks, but we've got uh, slightly stronger greens, and I need to articulate the um, structure of the hedge a little bit. You often find in paintings that the uh, hardest bits to paint are the bits that no one's going to look at in the final picture. So I need to establish this grassy verge. And I shall put back in the uh, join of the hedge to the grass, but we need a A definite change in colour and finish as well. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> I'd like to be a little bit more curve. I rather lost that tree, but I'm in two minds whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let's see how we feel about that. I think I prefer that because that makes sort of bluey, <coughs> bluey turn as it, uh, as it goes. Now a little bit of drawing. When you're laying darks on the top of paint in uh, oils, um, you only get a couple of dabs before you have to go and get some more paint because. Um, We're at the stage now where we do do get a little bit of picking up from the That's quite nice. Okay, now we've got a rather nice sort of thing I like from this post. We've got a rather lovely shadow that goes all the way over the grass. Like so. And then across the road. How good is that? Ah. Joy. Not only does it uh, <coughs> tell us about the shape of the bank, it uh, tells us <coughs> a ton of things about the uh, the day we're in. Okay. <coughs> Now we've got to, uh, this is the lit side here, so we can afford a few highlights in the grass. Again, they don't need to be specific. Um, and in, in, the, in here, I always find it hard to get the right tone for this, but uh, in here we've got sparkle, we've got um, the old leaf that's turned in the right way. Is, uh, I tend to put these in a bit too strong and then uh, tap with my fingers to uh, And we've got other um, little bits of light in here, which I might make a bit more of. Um, Not altogether happening with the car. <coughs> It'll be alright. I 
I might uh, come back and refine that later. That's better, that makes less of it then. And even though you can't see it, we'll have the uh, highlighting. Now we've got, uh, these are the real last bits of jewellery really. We've got these little touches of pinpricks of light almost. Um, which are really important and tell us uh, quite a lot about the day. <clears throat> and now we've got the structure of this foreground to deal with and when we're nearly done. So, <coughs> I need to take my, my darks back into the road a little bit. These are probably a little bit too strong, but um, I need I need this corner <coughs> a little bit stronger in tone. Indeed, we've got a bit there that's um, we've got a bit there that's uh, that's darker than the. Uh, I've got a bit there that's darker than the hedgerow, uh, just in this section here. And uh, it's quite important this because um, we've not got a lot of structure in the road. So the odd, uh, the odd bit of stuff in the road is uh, quite descriptive. Um, and I would tend to put that in because uh, okay <clears throat> so that's pretty good I think we're nearly there we've got um, really just refinement so I want to get in um, the glow in the road um, which is pretty strong. Um, and I want to build it uh, towards this corner because that's where my uh, picture's focus is. I think that has to go back in again after. And getting the tone as it goes around this corner is quite important. And that shadow has to be re-established. I was it premature in getting the uh, telegraph shadow in. I couldn't resist, but I should have done. <coughs> and I think that's enough for the main, uh, the main uh, surface of the road. It's not part of the picture we're going to be looking at.
these were for going too, too strong initially but uh, I'll um, I quite like a rigger for this sort of thing because it uh, makes a very un uh, exact mark and if it's too uh, too visible then it doesn't really matter I can uh, come back and Smash it with the finger. And again, I think this focus here is pretty important. So we're going to make that stronger than it really is. This nice shadow across there. There, that's much better. That takes us around the corner. And now on the road servers, I'm more or less just taking out anything that that uh, catches my eye and I can see a bit too much. Okay, so and then I've got to recover these edges here. Check my camera still going. Charles, and you're making a video of the painting. You can't detect two. Okay, let's get uh, this shadow back in, nice and strongly. And uh, the edge it makes along here. And that edge is all the way along there. And although it doesn't show that strongly, I'm going to make that way in there a little bit stronger and we've got a second way in there so we'll make that stronger and we've got yet another way in there all of these things are very descriptive and help um, help story so on number two so what they can just knock back a little bit um, <clears throat> I would also take the um, uh, take the road off into there a little bit that's rather nice that wasn't nice there we go um, and we've got a little bit of groundy sort of colour there um, if, uh, There's a few, few warm um, accents at the boundary of the uh, road. Again, I'll put most of the I'll put most of these um, in the foreground area. <coughs> And that is pretty much that. I got to uh, put back my nice shadow, which I put in a little bit too soon. That will I will actually come back and uh, soften that, um, but not now because um, tomorrow that will be so easy to do. Well, literally, I'll just put my finger on it and it'll be done. <clears throat> right, so our sky is our final thing. Uh, I need a very clean brush for this, completely clean brush. Um, I need to put a little bit of colour in the sky, but only a little bit, barely any. And the sky is a sort of 
dead greeny colour. Just enough to show there's a bit of something going on. Just tells us a little bit about the day. It is almost enough. Huh? There's a bit too much going on here and there. So I, what I'm doing there is uh, just randomising it a bit. Is pretty much it. Um, it didn't go wrong, the video recorder still goes, so uh, looks pretty good. And I think we'll say that's done. I will um, <coughs> put um, No, I can persuade the brush to do it. This is always a little bit risky. But I uh, quite like to. Um, and I think that is done. We shall cease at that point. So here we are with the uh, file, um, all done. Um, this might not be the absolute final. My usual policy is to uh, stick it on the on the uh, rack on the wall for a few weeks and consider it, and then I'll do final touches once it's a little bit dry. Um, it's uh, one of those. It's one of those paintings. It's sort of subject and that is quite difficult because it's quite an ordinary scene and you're 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 relying on the uh, the atmosphere carrying the day i might um cut it down a bit on the bottom there's rather too much road perhaps but uh, anyway those decisions are much better made um uh, after a, a week or so's thought uh, sometimes I, I leave them, sometimes I come back a month later and, and suddenly spot something that uh, that would improve improve the picture. But uh, anyway, I hope that's uh, been helpful to people. I don't know. But uh, we shall see if anyone looks at it on the, on the dreaded YouTube. Okay.